Hey guys, and welcome to the Vitamin Y 300, Vitamin Y Forever, episode 300 celebration. So, we went ahead and did the video, and uh, you guys commented, and uh, pretty much undisputed, Ubel exceeds one. Uh, I think the other two decks that were voted were Supervised Ubel and Ubel Beat, who I think got four and five respectively, but Ubel exceeds got nine. So, them combined was only even with the amount of votes that Ubel exceeds had. And, uh, you yeah, know, I told them I'm doing a deck profile for you guys. So, uh, no, Spell Exceeds has always been that deck that's been kind of, you know, wavering on being good. It's it's had t a whole bunch of re-innovations re from, you know, the original deck to that kind of level 10 spam deck that I was working with for a little while. Then Kakashi Kaya posted up his supposed best Spell Exceeds deck ever, and... Through his inspiration and the combination of the original one, I decided to go ahead and mush them together and create what you see here. This is my version of the Ubel Xyz deck. So I'm going to go ahead and do this deck profile, go over every, every card, and uh, hopefully you guys get the gist of it. So starting it up, the core of the deck, of course, Galaxy Wizard. Galaxy Wizard is just a really great card, and it serves double. Uh, I contributed to go ahead and get me a Galaxy card, which of course I'm going to get me Galaxy Queen's Light, so I can, you know, make them all the same level. And also, it can go ahead and increase its level by 4, going up to 8. So, I can, you know, have Galaxy Wizard on the field, be at 8, have something else, play uh, Galaxy Queen's Light, make them both 8, make a Felgrand, or level eat off, and make a Draco Smack. So, Galaxy Wizard is just a key component of this deck. It wasn't in the level 10 deck, because it really did beat it, but it was in the original Ubelxy's deck from the beginning, and I'm just glad that it's back. Kashikai also runs this card, and uh, you can definitely see why. It's uh, definitely just a great uh, card to be in here. Yes, of course, we run Ubel. Duh, it's, it's a Ubel Xyz deck, so of course, we run Ubel. So, one of each form of Ubel, you know, despite, you know, Dan like to screwing me over and making me draw them, doesn't mean that I should run multiple copies. So, um, you know, Ubel players have agreed and united. We've agreed. One of each is necessary. It's, that's all you need, just one of each. Next, we run three Dark Greffer and three Armageddon Knights. And you're probably saying, like, whoa, 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 Daniel, why so many? Why so many? A, I like the three Armageddon Knights and the three Dark Greffers. I like the consistency of getting them, you know? I feel like the more that I get them in my hand, the better that I do. And that even if I don't need to send anything, there's still monsters that I can summon. So, definitely, I just prefer three Armageddon Knights and three Dark Greffers. You may think otherwise, you may want to do something otherwise. I just prefer them, especially in this deck, and you will see why with these upcoming cards. So, you probably wonder, okay, what makes it your XUBLC deck so much different than Kakashi Kyle's? Well, Kakashi Kyle takes the light route, and what, by the mean the light route is that his different levels are all light monsters, where, you know, they have their own synergy with themselves, but they really don't have any synergy with Ubel besides just, um, you know, bringing them back, and then, you know, with Galaxy Queen's Light, and, you know, and then Synchro uh, succeed summoning with Galaxy Queen's Light with bringing them back with Meshing Battle. But how do you get that set up? Well, you just got to draw into them. If you don't draw into them, then you're not getting set up. So I decided to take the opposite route. I decided to go the dark route, which means that, you know, with my three dark refers, my three Armageddon Knights, sure, of course I want to send you Belt of Power, but I got a ton of other targets that I totally don't mind sending to the graveyard. And then when I send them to the graveyard, they will allow me to have more levels in the graveyard for Message and a Bottle. So, starting off, off, my level 1 dark, of course, I choose level eater. You now, level eater is a great monster, has synergy with Ubel, trying to eat levels off and decrease its level, being able to eat a level off of uh, uh, Galaxy Wizard, make it 7, make a Draco Smack. Uh, it's one of the s first cards that you want to send to the graveyard. It can also be brought back from the grave uh, through um, Mass Chameleon. So, you can go uh, Mass Chameleon, bring back level eater, and go ahead and synchro summon, and yeah, synchro summoning a little bit up in here, synchro summon to our mateys, and of course our mateys is like the best five synchro, so uh, that's also a play that you could do. Then, my level two dark, I decided to go with Krebons. Krebons is a level two dark tuner, who uh, can go ahead and block attacks by just paying 800 attack. I mean, not 800 attack, paying 800 life points. So, Krebins, my level 2 dark, so I can go ahead and send that to the grave, which increases my level range, so the broader my level range of the graveyard, the quicker it is, the quicker I can use messages in the bottle and start going into those plays. So, uh, Krebins is a pretty good standalone uh, level 2 dark tuner, so I can just go ahead and summon Krebins, you try to attack, I'll pay the 800, next turn I can go ahead and summon Armageddon Knight, drop something else, and sink or summon right into the new guy that came off the ban list, Goyo Guardian. So, this Ubelixis deck has a little bit of synchroing in it, yeah, yeah, so, you know, Goyo Guardian... You know, 28 heater, so 
I totally don't mind him. And you know what's also interesting is that, you know, never mind, never mind, never mind, I thought, I thought Goyo was dark, he's Earth. So, yep, there's my uh, level two. My level three, I decided to go with, uh, it took me a while to figure it out. Um, there was like this other card that when it's summoned, I think you get to summon another one. I think that was actually the level two that I replaced with. But uh, of course, I was looking for, you know, a dark level three. A uh, standalone card, and I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Uh, I tried a uh, tour guide to tour guide, of course. So I'm just go tour guide, tour guide, make that main. All right, and then I have my level three dark in the graveyard. But then I, when Roto came up to two, I definitely wanted to put the second Roto in, duh, because you know dark graffer and Armageddon Knight are key components of this deck. So I decided to drop the tour guide. So I was thinking, I was like, well, what's another level three dark? That's a pretty good standalone card. I think for one video I tried out uh, Curry Bandit, but I kind of felt like. You know, if I go ahead and summon Curry Bandit and send, I might send things that I don't want to send because if I send like a Mass Chameleon or the Breeze Dragon, I'll just smack myself. You know, I've never been a proponent to liking to mill slash excavate. I've always been a, more of a person who likes to use control sending like with Dark Reffer and Armageddon Knight. So I was still once again looking for a good level 3 standalone Dark and hold and behold, Gale. Gale, you know, it's limited to one for a reason, so Gale being able to go ahead and cut a monster in half, being able to get over 25 beater, of course it's a tuner, so I can go ahead and synchro summon, and then of course if I have Gale, and I have a level 4 in the field, I can go ahead and make a B-Rose, which is my level 7 choice for synchro. So, once again, another level, another dark level in the graveyard, and of course it can be a pretty good standalone card, and it is a uh, level 3. Uh, my level 4 choice, besides, you know, uh, uh, Dark Reffer and Armageddon Knight, of course, which would be Phantom of Chaos, because Phantom of Chaos has synergy with um, uh, Mass Chameleon and Debris Dragon. Being able to sync for 8 slash uh, XC for 4. So, if I want to sync for 8, I can go ahead and go into uh, Starter Spark, which is my card of, the choi card of choice this time. And uh, uh, when Debris Dragon gets his errata on here, because right now it says the other synchro material cannot be 4, I change it to it has to be level 4 or lower, so that means I can synchro summon with Phantom of Chaos when it gets its errata and make a level 8 synchro, of course. And, you know, just sitting on a tear, you know, because in the actual episode of 300 of uh, Vitamin Y where I was dealing with this deck, there was actually, I had tear, and I summoned the Breeze Dragon, and instead I went summoned the Breeze Dragon, the Breeze bring back um, Galaxy Wizard, and I had to exceed because he didn't have an Arata yet, but if he had an Arata, I could go ahead and Synchro Summon into uh, 8, and then I could have had Spark and Terra on the field, which has been a classic combo, you know, it's been kind of replaced ever since Beals, but, you know, st uh, you know Terra Spark combo, to, I would just rammed into his uh, Light Pulsar, you know, I would, you know, and, well, no, I wouldn't have done that, because then I wouldn't have been able to block, so I guess that was a correct play, but yeah, just being able to do that play, and hopefully in the upcoming future will be nice. And then my level 9, and I, I searched high and low, I was like, is there a level 9 dark that I can just go ahead and send to the graveyard and hold him to hoard? Here he is. So, really, the only purpose he really does have is just being just a level 9 fodder. You know, broadening my uh, range of my levels, of course, in the graveyard, allowing me to pretty much go into um, a heart... Yeah, Hard Earth, because I definitely want to do that sometimes. So, if he's in the graveyard, I can just go ahead and activate Message in the Bottle, summon all of them back. He's level 9. Go ahead and activate Galaxy of Light. They all become 9, and then make Hard Earth. Which doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's really awesome. So, <coughs> I can also jump off of him with Dark Reffer. You know, I can just go Discard Special. So, that's another point that I can do that's pretty good as well. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the reason why he's in there. So, yep. Alright, uh... So, let me see, what's the say? If I summon target one monster with zero defense in your grass, with some of that target in face of defense edition, its effects are negated, and you have to show. Oh, that's a pretty interesting play if I can let, if he can survive. Because he actually has uh, zero defense, so I can actually, uh, you know, summon Mask Chameleon. Mask Chameleon bring him back from the graveyard. If he survives, I can go ahead and turn him to attack mode and attack with 3,000 beer. Never really thought of that play. Hmm, it just has natural synergy, I guess. Alright, of course we go with the three Mask Chameleons. More U Bell Revival is great. Of course, reviving him, making uh, Synchro Summon XC plays, reviving him, going to Synchro Summon plays, reviving him and just being, you know, a uh, beater if he survives. And, of course, you know, Nibel on Defense Mode was effect negated, so it's the Shrug of the Terror. Um, Masculine is great, and I like Masculine in this deck. And Debris Dragon, because Debris Dragon has synergy with you, it has synergy with you, and you. So, yeah. 
Alright, and that is the monsters. Alright, onto the spells. Of course, three uh, Galaxy Queen's Light, the level modulator. You know, you target level 7 and higher, and then all of the face up monsters in the field uh, uh, become that level to the end phase. So you go ahead and just change everybody's level, and you can go into some XE plays. Uh, message in the Bottle, of course, since I refuse to play Troll Chard, uh, Message in the Bottle is a pretty good substitute. So, uh, pretty much you target three monsters with different levels in your graveyard, especially summon them. Um, their attacks become zero, and also their effects are negated. And if you do not exceed summon this turn, uh, you lose 4,000 life points. So you gotta be careful with it, so you gotta be smart. So, an interesting play you can do is that you can activate Message in the Bottle, summon you Bell and two other monsters, then you can go ahead and activate, uh, uh, Galaxy Queen's Light, make them all 10, then you can just exceed with those two monsters, not y with you, Bell. And as long as you exceed, you don't take the 4,000. So you can go ahead and make a Gungerda, or you can make a uh, uh, Gustav Max, and you Bell will be on the field, which is the fact gate in defense mode. And if they kill it, you get Terra. Well, of course, you can also make a Super super D Chocolate Fudge cover, of course. So, uh, got this one from Kashi Kakashi Kyle. He decided to go this route. Like I said, he went the light route, I went the dark route. I kind of feel like the Dark Route has more synergy, so, yeah, three messenger in the bottles. It's like my version of Soul Charge, except not as broke and not as stupid. And I can still attack. <laughs> Alright, two Reddas, of course, because, you know, Dark Griffin and Armageddon Knight are, like, the key uh, parts of this deck, and they are both warriors, so you definitely want to search them up. Uh, Dark Hole, in case, you know, crap hits the fan, and I just want to go ahead and Dark Hole the field. Foolish for more graveyard setup, and that is the spells. Onto the traps, we got three Call of the Haunted, because, of course, you want to bring things back. If you want to bring you back Ebel, more power to you, but of course you just want to go ahead and call the Haunted something back, which will give you more fodder for uh, your XP plates. Um, 3 Metal Reflex Slime. Uh, it's a nice level 10 with a 3000 booty, so it can block me, and of course it has synergy uh, with Ebel, just being level 10, and uh, yeah, I like it. And it's a good card to jump off with uh, Galaxy Queen's Light when I don't have Ebel on the field. And then of course 3 Limit Reverse. You know, Limit Reverse can bring back you and go into some plays, it can bring back you, it can bring back you, um, can bring back you, so definitely just a, a lot of fun plays with uh, the Mirror Reverse. Alright, and that is the main deck, so onto the extra deck. Uh, we got a, a Super Dimensional Chucky Fudge Cover, of course, 5000 Beater, who uh, wipes the field and you can't activate anything in response, so you better have some kind of card to play as soon as he's summoned, because if you don't, then you can uh, respond to his effect of wipe. So he's only supposed to speed one, so when he's summoned, you can go ahead and resolve something, but if you don't got anything, you know, after I use my effect, you can't resolve. Alright, so uh, then we move on. We got uh, Gungurda, a uh, really nice uh, rank 10 with two level 10s. Uh, you can detach XE material to target one card in opponent's uh, controls, destroy that target, inflict a thousand, and he can't attack this turn, but he's still a 34 beater with a 3000 booty, so pretty good. Uh, we run one um, Gustav Max. I don't use him that often, but when he does, he put in that work, just like this episode of. Uh, Episode 300 of Evox Seed, so I can go ahead and detach the material and go bang bang and hit for uh, 2k, which is a lot. It's a lot of life points. That's a solemn warning in my opponent's face with, of course, 3,000 attack and 3,000 booty. We got a uh, Hard Earth Dragon, probably the one singular card that inspired me and, of course, other Evox players to make a Evox Seed deck. So uh, it's made with three level 9, so if you have Evox on the field and, you know, you have another, like, you have you bell in the field, you have, like, you can have, like, okay, activate Call of the Haunted, summon you bell. Uh, summon Armageddon Knight, drop level, eat a level, eat a, eat a level off you bell, become 9, Galaxy Queen's Light, make them all 9, XC, Hard Earth Dragon. Uh, Hard Earth Dragon's, you know, kind of like has a pseudo you bell effect, so it can't be destroyed by battle, and your opponent takes uh, the battle damage you attack, so you can actually take this and ram it into your opponent, and they will take the damage. So it's kind of like Ultimate Nightmare, except it doesn't destroy. But the interesting effect that he has is that uh, during the uh, during your opponent's end phase, you can attach XC material and banish all cards your opponent can currently controls that were normal summon, special summon, or set this turn. So you know they're gonna try to set up some back row for uh, hard earth and try to get them next turn when you you know attack the monster. You can just go okay, attach, banish all of them cards. And then its last effect is that if this card is destroyed, while well, has XC materials, you can touch some of this card from the graveyard. And if you do against that thousand attack for every card currently banished, so all those cards that you were banishing during your opponent's end phase, yeah, a thousand for each one of those. So definitely just a really interesting card. Uh, next we run a card that's made with two level nines, just in case I want to run. Um, and I decided to go with um, Enterprise, but I guess I changed his name. I guess it, I guess I'm I'm not even trying to enter Balthar Bal Bathnir. I don't I don't know. I just call him Enterprise. 
but uh, he's made with two level 9 monsters, and he's kind of like another uh, Trishula slash um, Ouroboros. So, once per turn, I can detach the material, then activate one of the following effects. I can banish a card my opponent's control, banish a card in their hand, banish a card from their graveyard, or banish a card of their deck. And these effects do not target. So, yeah. 29 beater, 25 beat, pretty good. Alright, my level 8, I decided to go, of course, with Felgran. Felgran is a jerk, and he's expensive. Damn, $22? Woo! But Felgran, uh, of course, you know what Felgran does, and, uh, you know, anything is possible with Popsicle, you know. Thanks to Galaxy Wizard, I can go into Felgrand sometimes. My level 7, Draco Smack, of course. $70. God, so expensive. <laughs> Draco Smack, uh, you know, just be able to go Galaxy Wizard, level Eater. Eat a level off Galaxy Queen's Light, make them both 7 XC. And to, uh, Draco Smack is a really good play, and then, of course, you know, he's the rank 7, he's the rank 7 choice. Then we got some 4s, of course, Exiton, uh, 101. Level of Chain to allow me for a grant. $50! Wow. I'm glad I got mine. <laughs> Uh, I will change to go ahead and get some uh, graveyard set up, so go ahead and detach an XC material to put uh, some stuff in the graveyard, get you more set up, and of course, uh, King of Fire Limps to allow me to search for more Mass Chameleons, because the more Mass Chameleons I have, the better, I love Mass Chameleons. Alright, and then the Synchros, uh, Daughter Spark, Black Rose, Glado Guardian, and uh, Armadies. Alright, and that was the deck profile for uh, you both Seas, so... Uh, this is the this is the new re innovative one. I really feel like this deck is just uh, really great. You know, it's it's been really fun. It's been really working out really well lately. Having great synergy with itself, and you know, so far since it's it's been uh, on uh, Vitamin Y since its update, it's just been doing really well. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Like I said, thank you guys for supporting me and getting me to uh, where I am today. Thank you for watching 300 episodes of Vitamin Y forever. So uh, we're just gonna keep on. Continuing on, shooting for the next goal, so I guess, uh, I don't know, I guess we'll celebrate 400 whenever we get to it, you know, 100 days from now. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do something different, or maybe something again, because, you know, you still haven't seen Super Bites and Yubo Beat, so maybe for 500 you might get to see one of those decks. But I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile, tell me what you guys think of the deck. If you guys want to go ahead and make some changes, try the deck out yourself, go right ahead. Of course, it's probably uh, going to be frowned upon because it's not, you know, competitive. But, no, I don't really like to run back row when it comes to these decks and these uh, Ubel decks. I like to use the strength of Ubel and the synergy that it has with the deck. So, uh, you know, these decks don't have back row. So, that's what, I, that's what I'm doing with this deck. So, uh, like I said, tell me what you guys think about this deck in the comment section below. Uh, tell me what you guys think of this deck compared to Kakashi Kyle's. So thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for supporting me, and I will see you guys in the next Vitamin Y. See you guys tomorrow, episode 301, using Cosmic Ebell. Thanks for watching.